The goblins have a one! Four! Dog! Wait, okay. Blast! What? Intelligent than any of the orcs over here. <laughs> He's... Actually, he is, so... Father of Dragons. Welcome to Gary Khan. Uh, what game you got going here? This is the Siege of Nargothron. This is sort of like a prequel to the Lord of the Rings. This is when uh, Sauron is a lackey to Morgoth, and Glarung, the Father of Dragons, was sent with an army to go and punish Purin by uh, causing anything his son Thurin uh, touches to basically go backwards and uh, go haywire. And he's about to wipe out the elven city of Nar Nargothron. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, this fighter. One, two, three. Are you spending all your money before the weekend's over? Um, does it look like I'm talking to a hunter? What's your name? Drew Hunt. And from? From Normal, Illinois, although I just drove here from Delaware. Normal Illinois, do you ever get teased because you're at a gaming convention you're from Normal Illinois? You know, I get teased in general because I'm from Normal, but not specifically at gaming conventions. In fact, I might not get teased at all at gaming conventions. Do you embrace the term nerd or geek? Sure, I like them both. I'm always working. Gotta work. Here at Gary Con 3, we got some kind of poetry game going on. Gary's picture on the card. We try to wander around, trade, steal, lie, cheat, beg, whatever, to get the best poker hand. How you doing so far? So far I need the ace. Well, didn't you come right at us looking for our cards right away? Yeah, I was, that was the begging part. So you must have a nickname around here. <laughs> you don't want to know what it is. That's this one, right? And the versus shield low is, oh, you're unhorsed again, draft. And you didn't break your shield. No. Oh, what distance? 33. 30, 30, 30. I think we're a little short. So 33. But it might scatter towards you. Don't worry about the arrow with your name on it. Worry about the one that says to whom it may concern. My name is Bill Casino, and I am Elisa Gygax's husband. And Oak Hill Cemetery actually is very important to the family because all the Burdicks and the Powells and the Gygaxes are buried right around where we got married, so we felt it was all around family. It's just a fact, I'm dressed in black, Elisa is dressed in black, and here's Gary with his bright shirt on with his Hawaiian tie. My outfit, I made it myself. I'm actually uh, into the Renaissance kind of part of... I made mine too, see? <laughs> it's a dice bag. Scale mail. Then we had Monopoly, and it had dice. Games with dice I could deal with. What is your most famous game? Probably the awful green things from outer space. Interesting title. Oh, yes, well, Tim Cask helped name it. I just called it the awful green things. He put outer space on it, and then he published it in the Dragon magazine. So. <laughs> Now remember, if you did not, if you did not, re, if you did not refuel previously, the other goblin, the other goblin who is completely immolated, continues to burn. The first time I met Gary was up here in Lake Geneva. The role then evolved into the Chainmail Bay for Gary Con. Yes, I guess that would be And well. because gaming is hard work, and it's tiring, and you walk around and it helps wake everybody up. <laughs> it's like he was just normal every day, hey, how's it going, shooting the shit, BSing, like just real down to earth like that kind of guy. The guy who was sitting at the end of the table, oh my god, he just... Is he funny? Oh, um, he just made it, well, pretty much my best Gary Khan experience so far. We forgot you were on the adventure with us. Greetings, I'm Eric Smith, here at Gary Khan 3, to show you how to make absinthe at a convention. What an odd thing to find in a bathroom. It is, but this is where I need to have my cold dripping water. And what you do is you put a ounce of absinthe, and this is lucent absinthe, which is from uh, France. It's distilled in copper vats that was made by Gustav Eiffel, who made the Eiffel Tower, and it's the only brand that you can buy that has real worm's wood in it in America. It's been illegal for 90-some years, and only recently has become legal again. This here is what it looks like. You put an ounce in, and you put four ounces in on top, and you slowly drip this water here on a sugar cube. And that causes the items and 
such in the uh, absence to louche, what the French, the French call louching, which is turning from a translucent green to an opaque green, which is the traditional color that most people will see absinthe on their television show. And if you want to know what it tastes like, it tastes like a black jelly bean. Most people say it tastes like licorice, but I think it's like a black jelly bean because you put the sugar cube in it. Let me hold this gentleman up here. Go ahead. <laughs> and there I have two glasses of absinthe. <laughs> and I'm on my way to go run a game. <laughs> It felt good that you could actually make a difference in the world, and especially for a preteen to teen, you know, when you don't feel like you have any control in life as it is. And here it is, you get to walk to school with this attitude, knowing that, hey, this village was better off because of me. Yeah, it's only a storyline, but the human brain doesn't know the difference between reality and fiction. You get the same benefits of balancing your checkbook as you would the national debt. The success that the experience gained from being able to do something correct makes the difference it gives the attitude it's the reason why a lot of gamers walk around with an air of confidence that people just don't understand where they get it from and yeah we've had our mistakes our characters have died before but we've gone through a lot of trial and error when you're talking a character's death that's no big deal to pick up and try again as opposed to real life you try a career you fail most people will buckle under grab you know, a recreational pharmaceutical or an alcohol or something to try to cope with it. With gaming, you don't have that that personal fallout when you make a mistake. You still have the depression that comes about, like, oh man, I spent 20 years on building that character, whatever. But it, it gives you the get up and do it again attitude that you generally won't get from the people who don't do this stuff. I mean, how many, how many kids do you see, like, we get picked on by the jocks, so we turn around and grab these guns and decide to start shooting people in school? I mean, that's a classic example of an otherwise intelligent person confronted with a physical object that they cannot beat. They're, they're geeks. They can't beat against these jocks. So they default to the only thing that can beat the jock, which is, in this case, the firearms. If these same people had had other opportunities in which to test and experiment their, their intelligence, they could have come up with a thousand ways to beat these jacks. Fill their car with shaving cream, you know? There's a lot of ways to get back at these people where you don't have to compete with them on the level, on the playing field that they're better at, which is the physical fighting, the, the sports events, whatever, you know? The jocks today will beat up the kids that are geeks without realizing that these same geeks are the one that's going to be in charge of your house loan, your computer system, you know what I mean? These are the guys that are going to be making or breaking your future while you're making or breaking their, their, their high school years, you know? Having fun? Oh yeah, all the time. I'm an old schooler from way back. That Gary got his love of fantasy and his style of writing from his mother who would read to him very often and his father who would tell him fantastical bedtime stories. So he truly had the gift of his parents being very steeped into language and storytelling. So, so his basis of, of gaming. Being in between, he's not in he, said, he said that if he has to, he will kill him. I'll show you my power. <laughs> How did opening the gate tactic work for him? Uh, he pulled it off. He launched some arrows, killed some of the people carrying the battering ram, so it didn't advance. More fresh bodies had to come and help pick it up. He closed the gate in time. He hasn't tried it since. And so there's this beautiful sliding scale. If you're really, really good, you have a really high, relatively really high chance of a critical success. If you really, really suck, you have a relatively high chance of bubble. What's your definition of a nerd or a geek? My definition of a nerd or a geek? I think a geek is sort of more of an insult version of a nerd. Like you might call someone a geek if you were trying to get at them for the same activities you might praise them for being a nerd doing. Like, oh, you're such a physics nerd. That's good. Like a physics geek. Mm, no, that's bad. So gaming nerd, good. Gaming geek, bad. Yeah.
and definitely not for children because uh, my movies are not cut or edited. So gore, violence, nudity, cannibalism, drug fueled orgies, demon, demonic possession, vampires, and peanut butter. And peanut butter. A nerd is a educated but lacking in social skills. And a geek. A geek is a fanboy in the nerd realm of ideas. Seriously, I don't think I would have turned out nearly as good a person if it wasn't for these games. Seriously.